Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So let me delve straight into the first topic. So I am going to be giving you a bit more additional information on Ed Woodward. I think I did mention Ed Woodward on my previous video. Now Ed Woodward has come out and insisted that you know we will not uh, spend big uh, when the transfer market does reopen because like I mentioned before a lot of teams are under financial difficulty you know due to the coronavirus crisis so like I did say you know a lot of clubs summer transfer budgets will be reduced and Ed Woodward has uh, confirmed this I think on a fans forum yesterday you know he basically you know, says we will not do um, you know we will not do you know as much business in the transfer market and that so he's basically you know believes our transfer budget will be limited because there was rumours emerging out before saying you know we was going to get around is it 200 odd million pounds to spend when the transfer market does reopen and that so obviously you know reflecting on some of these comments that ed woodward has said it's also come out of sky sports obviously you know our move for Jaden sancho now could be in doubt because like i mentioned to you before Jaden sancho will cost us at least 100 million pounds uh, maybe our move for jack Grealish could be in doubt um, and obviously, you know, there has been a hell of a lot of players on our agenda. So this is, you know, what Ed Woodward has said. I haven't, you know, read all of the article of what Ed Woodward has said. But he basically, you know, said, did Ed Woodward, that, you know, the market, you know, will not be a normality, basically, you know, what's going on with the coronavirus pandemic. And I did say, you know, it will affect a lot of teams' transfer business. So Ed Woodward, of course, has been at Manchester United since 2012, is it? So he has been at the football club now around eight years. Obviously, you know, Man United have been very, very critical of him. And, you know, I've also been very, very critical of Ed Woodward. Obviously, you know, he's been criticised, you know, for us overpaying for players in recent years. Of course, you know, we paid like £89 million for Paul Pogba. You know, we paid £75 million for Romelu Lukaku. Uh, when we did have him, of course, obviously, you know, we paid £50 million for Fred. £40 million for Matic. £80 million pounds for Harry Maguire, so we are known for overpaying for players. And he's also been criticised because our recruitment policy has been poor for the last six or seven years or so. And also he's been criticised with his poor selection of managers because obviously, you know, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. And Woodward, of course, got rid of David Moyes. He endured, was it, nine months at the football club. Um, obviously, we, know he was we knew he was never going to be a successful manager at Manchester United, David Moyes. Of course, you know, Ferguson was at the fault for ever recommending him in. Because obviously, the main explanation why Ferguson recommended him in is because they was both Scottish. Obviously, you know, Louis van Gaal went. He endured two years at Manchester United, won the FA Cup. And of course, after that, you know, Jose Mourinho went. And Jose Mourinho endured two and a half years at Manchester United. Did win two trophies in his first season. But like I've mentioned, you know, Man United and Wood would have recruited a hell of a lot of players in since the Alex Ferguson era. We have recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. Like I said, under the David Moyes era, we recruited two players in, and that was Fellaini and Juan Mata. Uh, Marion Fellaini now is no longer at the football club. Um, obviously, you know, Fellaini did enjoy six years at Manchester United. Uh, we paid just over £27 million for him under David Moyes, but he did leave back in January 2019 for Laney. He was the first player to leave the football club under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era, but one matter still here. Obviously, you know, Louis van Gaal, you know, brought a hell of a lot of players in. You know, he brought the likes of Schneiderlin, Sebastian Schweinsteiger, Di Maria, Falcao, Daly Blind, Rojo, Damian, uh, Memphis Depay. You know, Louis van Gaal brought a hell of a lot of players in. But actually, you know, Louis van Gaal got, also got rid of a lot of players. You know, he got rid of a lot of players we had under the Alex Ferguson era because, you know, we still had a lot of players under the Alex Ferguson, Alex Ferguson era. We had a lot of players, you know, when we had David Moyes. So let's just put that into the equation. So they're the players van Gaal recommended in. And uh, Jose Mourinho, you know, he also brought a hell of a lot of players in. And, you know, analysing the vast majority of this team, it is Jose Mourinho's. Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into the football club. And I think he spent around, was it, £400 million? Jose Mourinho's first signing was Eric Bay, who we paid £30 million for. He is very, very injury-prone, though, is Eric Bay, so that is an element of concern, but still very, very good centre-half. 
Um, obviously, you know, Jose Mourinho brought Lee Grant in. Obviously, you know, very injury prone. Has seldom He's seldom played for Man United. He's hardly played as Lee Grant, but I think he's out with an injury at the moment. Don't forget Mourinho brought Diego De Lowe in. I think that was in his final transfer window. He brought Diego De Lowe in. Um, obviously, you know, he brought Victor Lindelof in. He brought Fred in. He brought Matic in. He brought Lukaku in. He brought Sanchez in. Um, he brought... Mkhitaryan in, he brought Ibrahimovic in, so yeah, Jose Mourinho recruited a hell of a lot of players into the football club, and obviously, you know, Solskjaer, you know, so far has enjoyed three transfer winners at Manchester United, and he, what? Yeah. Red da. What what's red? What is it like a fruity flavour? Yeah. Yeah, you can borrow it. Yeah. I don't need to borrow it full thing. I'm gonna need to put a bit in while I'm here. Don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. So yeah, Charlie, you're on Facebook. Yeah. Tune into um if you like your your baseline. Yeah. If you follow our house events. Yeah. Type that in. Dale yeah. Pastel. Yeah. He does um live DJ sets all the time. He's doing them tonight. Yeah. Pass, doing a set pass them all the quick. Right, thanks. Thanks, right, Tim. Thank you. Sorry about that. I was just uh, talking to my uh, sister and that. But he had um. So so far, Solskjaer has enjoyed three chance winners at the club, and you know he has spent two hundred and twenty million pounds on five players last summer. Of course, he brought Daniel James. Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. and of course in January he brought Bruno Fernandes and Odi Nogalo in and I've got a credit you know the players that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has recommended in so far so yeah so you know this is what you know Ed Woodward has basically done he's like seven or eight years at Manchester United there was also positivity coming out regarding Woodward uh, the other week like updated you because it did say that Ed Woodward now is no longer involved in our recruitment process so that's obviously you know very very good news but, you know, I've been, obviously, you know, very, very critical of Ed Woodward. Um, I haven't only been critical of Woodward, you know. Don't forget, you know, throughout the course of this season, you know, we have been doubting the club's ownership, the Glazers. And the Glazers have been here since 2005, I think it is. And they've been here, like, 15 years now of the Glazers. And they've taken over a billion pounds out of the football club. So, yeah, Ed Woodward insists, you know, our business... Will not be as you will not be may not be as usual in the summer transfer market, you know, due to this coronavirus pandemic. So that is the latest news now regarding Ed Woodward. Now I'm going to delve into another topic now, and this topic is you know for when the season you know could resume. I don't think there's actually no an exact date yet, you know, when the Premier League season is going to resume. But I've just been reading recent reports today, and it does mention you know that the Premier League. Uh, will return within weeks. Uh, games will be played behind closed doors, of course, for public health reasons. And it also says, you know, that Premier League games could be shown free on television. So that's obviously, you know, very, very good news. Because obviously, um, the Premier League has been suspended since like the 9th of March. So it has been suspended now for over a month as the Premier League, obviously, you know, due to this coronavirus pandemic. Um, like I updated you recently, it did say that uh, the Premier League have held talks, I think, with UEFA. And it said the Premier League have got a back plan to resume, uh, to end, this, uh, end the season sorry, by the 31st of July. They want to end the season by the 30, 31st of July. Now, the main explanation for this is, is so, you know, Champions League and Europa League games can be played in August. And I think Premier League have agreed this with UEFA and all um, of that. Um, like I updated you yesterday regarding Liverpool, um, it did say regardless whether the season resumes or doesn't resume, Liverpool will still be handed the Premier League title because uh, UEFA, of course, have confirmed. It's Alexander Seferin, who's the UEFA president. He said that you know Liverpool should still be given the title because Liverpool only need two wins from you know what what is it their nine remaining games have got. And they are sitting 25 points clear of Manchester City. So Liverpool are going to end their 30-year drought. Reiterate what I mentioned before, though. You know, if the season was to be void and it wasn't to resume, then it would be interesting to see how it would implicate, implicate the leagues because there was some reports saying, like, you know, teams won't get relegated, you know, who were in the relegation zone and stuff like that. 
But and I think you wafer are planning to play the Champions League on the 29th of August. So this is what you know you wear for our planning. You know, Roy Keane's come out and he said, you know, Premier League players should refuse pay cuts because I think some players have had their wages cut by around 30%. You know, don't forget, you know, Liverpool are changing their sponsor from New Balance to Nike. I think Newcastle and Watford are also changing their sponsors. But yeah, you know, the season will definitely resume, definitely. But it will be played behind closed doors. And UEFA um, also, too, have been recently talking to around 55 national associations over resuming the season. It did say UEFA will make a decision on who gets qualification for the Champions League for next season if the season isn't to resume, um, I've been hearing reports saying we wouldn't get Champions League if the season wouldn't, wouldn't resume. And then I've been hearing other reports that have been contrast, totally contrast, saying we would get qualification for the Champions League if the season wasn't to resume. But we're in a Champions League spot because we're sitting fifth and don't forget Manchester City are banned from the Champions League for the next two seasons. But, you know, their appeal is a long process, don't forget. And, you know, it was said the other week that Arsenal could get qualification for the Champions League. I don't know, to be quite honest with you, but the season is going to resume. Obviously, you know, they had the meeting last Friday, did the Premier League, obviously, to establish plans for the remainder of the season. They had a meeting. Uh, they were supposedly, you know, set to talk about finishing the season on the 30th of June. But there was no talks about the season finishing on the 30th of June. There was no talks about, you know, issues with... Pay, players' pay cuts, there was no mentions of transfer windows and stuff and the Premier League, you know, have had quite a few meetings, you know, to establish plans for the remainder of this season but I was hearing recently, you know, that was going to start on the 8th of June that was going to start on the 8th of June and then, you know, finish it within a five-week period and stuff like that and there's around 57 Premier League players' contracts that are due to expire um, at the end of June and that so there you go, and they're free to leave on the 1st of July. So probably will start sometime in June, but I just don't think there's an exact date yet, you know, when it's going to start. It's just going to resume, basically, when it is safe to do so on that. But there you go, so that's the latest on all of that. Now, obviously, you know, as I updated you earlier on today on my previous video, obviously, you know, I give you the news, didn't I, regarding Paul Popper, didn't I? Because obviously, you know, there has been reports emerging out of the mainstream media today, and it was stemming from reports in Italy. Also, I think it was coming from some French reports as well. And they said that PSG have offered us two of their players in a swap deal for Paul Pogba. And that's Angel Di Maria and Julian Dractyla. I'm very, very sceptical that this swap deal will go through. Um, I don't know if there's, be, if there's going to be a fee involved in this alleged swap deal. Uh, you know, maybe some Manchester United fans would take Angel Di Maria back at the football club. Because Angel Di Maria is a former Manchester United player. Angel Di Maria, of course, only enjoyed, I think, one season with a football club under Louis van Gaal, I don't forget. And enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. But, you know, we paid just under £60 million, was it, from Di Maria from Real Madrid. And obviously, you know, a year later, we sold him for just under £50 million to PSG. Now, Angel Di Maria is in his fifth season with Paris Saint-Germain. So, they're the two players that reportedly PSG have offered us. But disregarding any swap deal, I think, you know, PSG would have to offload either Mbappe or Neymar, who are the two most expensive players in the world, to fund the move for Paul Popper. But I'm very sceptical he'll go to PSG. Uh, obviously, you know, don't forget uh, reports from Italy if this is from Tuto Sport, which is an Italian source. And they've actually, you know, said that Inter Milan have recently expressed their interest in Pogba. And don't forget, you know, Inter Milan have already recruited three players from us. Ashley Young, Romelu Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez of Inter Milan. So, there you go. But I think Inter Milan did say they're looking to try and get rid of Mario Cardi on a permanent transfer. So then, you know, they could try and then fund the move for Paul Pogba. But, you know, Mario Cardi, I think, is on loan at PSG at the moment. So, yeah. So it says that Inter Milan have expressed an interest. Don't forget, like you updated you the other week, it said that Inter Milan had showed an interest in Anthony Martial. Uh, but I think, you know, if Paul Pogba leaves a football club, like I've mentioned before, I think he'll have a go to Real Madrid or he'll make a return back to Turin. He'll make a return back to Turin. Because like I mentioned, you know, Popper did enjoy four good years in Turin with Juventus, but the vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison to his ones in Turin. So let's just put that into the equation. But, you know, um, 
like I mentioned, revert back to last summer. Real Madrid were relentlessly linked with Paul Pogba. But the main explanation, you know, why we didn't get... Um, the main explanation why Madrid didn't get Paul Pogba last summer is because we priced him out of last summer's transfer market because we said last summer that we wanted around £180 million for Paul Pogba. So we was just demanding over double. We was demanding just over double than what we paid for him from Juventus back in 2016. So, But his actual preference was to make a move to Real Madrid last summer because, like I mentioned, pogba has got a good relationship with Zinedine Zidane. He was talking a lot about Madrid last year. Mini Raliola's also got a good relation with Real Madrid. And Madrid recruited a good five or six players in last summer. Uh, they're also looking to get rid of the likes of Amis Rodriguez, Gareth Bale, Benzema. Well, Benzema's coming to an end of his footballing career anyway. They're looking to get rid of Dani Ceballos on a permanent transfer at Madrid. The reports come out of the French press yesterday saying that Zinedine Zidane wants him and Real Madrid have identified Paul Popper as their number one priority target. And this is, you know, what it has basically said. Uh, but also, you know, they've got other midfielders on their agenda. Don't forget, you know, they've expressed an interest in Eduardo Camavinga. He currently plays for Rennes, does, you know, Eduardo Camavinga. But, you know, they have got quite a few players on their agenda, have Real Madrid. You know, like I said, you know, Barcelona have also inquired about Paul Popper's availability in the past. But I don't know, you know, whether he's staying or going because he has been a lot of uncertainty over his future at the football club. Don't forget, you know, we have decided not to trigger that one-year extension on Paul Popper's contract. So he has got exactly now a year left on his Manchester United contract as Popper. And like I said to you on my video this morning, we've got around, around nine players' contracts that are due to expire in the summer of 2021. So let's just put that into the equation. Let's just put that into the equation that. But, you know, you had the Spanish expert coming out earlier on this week and, you know, he actually said, it did the Spanish expert, he said, did the Spanish expert, you know, we will, you know, give get Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the club. We will get Paul Popper a new long-term contract at the club and that. But, you know, I don't know, you know, to be quite honest. You know, Alan Shearer has come out recently. You know, he believes we've made a decision on Paul, Paul Popper's future. Obviously, you know, Paul Popper, you know, was talking to the United Podcast the other week. He gave an interview to the United Podcast and he said quite a few interesting stuff, did Popper. Obviously, you know, he was talking about, you know, what convinced him to leave back in 2012. Because obviously, you know, we did let him go to Juventus on a free transfer back in 2012. We did have him under the Ferguson area, but we had to let him go due to limited appearances. Obviously, you know, he was talking about the issues that he's had with injuries this season. Because Pop has only played eight times this season for Manchester United due to his injuries and stuff like that. But Pop has sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player. And he did say, you know, we could only get £72 million for Pogba when the transfer market does re-up, we could only get £72 million for him. So that's, or £70 million, did it say? So that's around, what, £19 million less than what we paid for him, because we did pay £89 million for the player and that. Uh, don't forget, he recently responded to the criticism that he has received from Graham Soonis, Paul Popper and that. But um, there's been a few players on our agenda who could replace Paul Popper at the football club. Um, also too, that's the latest news on him, also too, earlier on today, I obviously you know give you the news on Jade and Sancho, um, like I said, reiterate what I've just said uh, earlier on today and earlier on in this video, that our move now for Jade and Sancho could be in doubt, because you know, Ed Woodward insists, Ed Woodward of course um, insists we, will may, we may not do the business as usual in the summer transfer market and stuff because uh, with the financial difficulties so maybe we won't now get Jade and Sancho. Um, obviously you know you saw my videos that I did yesterday you know I give you the news on Son Nagiez I also give you the news on Kaladu Kulabali Manchester United are no longer in for him now. Of course uh, I give you the new, I was talking with you a lot about Harry Kane was it earlier on in the week or was it last week? Obviously, Manchester United now are not going to sign Harry Kane because, you know, Tottenham said they wanted at least £200 million. And Solskjaer's given a few explanations why, you know, we don't want to sign Harry Kane. But, you know, there you go. Now, let's delve into another topic. So, do you think, you know, we can win the tight Premier League title under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Now, that is the question. Now, I think, you know, Clebberton, who is a former Manchester United player, He's actually no bat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to win the Premier League title with Manchester United. Now, 
Of course, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won the Premier League for seven years. The last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season, and that was, but yeah, it was back in 2013. But you know, don't forget, you know, we are the most successful team in England because we have won the most titles. We've won 20 titles, 13 of them Premier Leagues, and overall, anyway, you know, we are one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, some Manchester United fans are very, very sceptical, you know, that we can get our 21st title and our 14th Premier League title under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. So, do you think, you know, we can get the title under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era? Now, I do believe if we can recruit the right calibre players in when the transfer market does reopen, I think we can challenge for the title next season. Possibly not, maybe not win it, but I think, you know, minimum we can challenge for it next season. So I think, you know, Solskjaer said, you know, we need to make around three or four signings, you know, for when the transfer market does reopen, you know, so we can, you know, be up there challenging for the title. And Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he thinks, you know, we need to strengthen up. Obviously, of course, you know, we're looking to get a centre forward in. We're also looking to get a right winner in. We're also looking to get a midfielder in. So there, three areas Solskjaer wants to strengthen up. And also, there's still some reports emerging out saying that we do want to get a centre back in. Um, but me, personally speaking, I don't think Manchester United are going to sign a centre half when the transfer market does reopen. But I liked what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said the other week because he insists, you know, that we will exploit the transfer market when the transfer market does reopen. This is, you know, what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had said. But I've got to make an admission because I think, you know, we have really, really improved in the transfer market under Solskjaer. What I mean is I think, you know, we have been a bit more sensible with our recruitment. So that's one admission I have got to make. We've been a bit more sensible with our recruitment. And I think a lot of people, you know, do like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer strategy, you know, because he does want to continue the policy of recruiting young players to Manchester United, you know, like he did do last summer. So he wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British players to Manchester United and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, but, you know, we may not make four signings in the summer. You know, we could only make one or two signings, you know, you just don't know, basically. But um, Solskjaer's got the backing of Woodward and he's got the backing of the Glazers because, don't forget, Ed Woodward said numerous of times throughout the course of this season that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe, even though, you know, we have enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. You know, we've enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. And obviously, you know, he has been under a lot of pressure throughout the course of this season because we have had a lot of negative results under Solskjaer. You know, I think one of the worst defeats we suffered under the Solskjaer era, obviously, you know, was the 4-0 defeat to Everton last, se last April, last season, yeah. Solskjaer, after that game, publicly come out and apologised. We had the 2-0 home defeat to Cardiff at the end of last season. Obviously, you know, we've had defeats to, like, Newcastle this season away from home. You know, defeats at home to Chris... We had the defeat at home to Crystal Palace 2-1, don't forget. Uh, obviously, you know, drawn quite a lot of games as well. Drew with Southampton, uh, Drew with Wolves. So we have dropped a hell of a lot of points throughout the course of this season. But Solskjaer is aware of the pressure, you know, that he has been under. But there again, we've had some positive results under the Oligan and Solskjaer era. But, you know, obviously, you know, before the football season that was suspended, we was in a really, really good vein of form. Because don't forget, you know, we are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions. And that's our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, was the interim manager. Solskjaer got the job on a permanent basis, reflecting on what he did when he was the interim manager. Because, you know, don't forget Solskjaer won his first eight games at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, he'd only lost one of his first 17 in all competitions. And, of course, he won 14 out of 19 in all competitions. So, that was enough to give him the job permanently. So, let's be honest about that. I've also got to credit him because I think Solskjaer has promoted the youth very, very well because the young players have been given their opportunities this season. You know, such as Greenwood's done well, Brandon Williams has done well, you know, Ghana and Kachong, I expect them to get more opportunities going on into next season and that. So, you know, so that's also a positive you can take. And Solskjaer's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in. We have seen a good nine players leave since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in. But like I said, you know, I'm determined to back him all the way. I still don't think he's the foreseeable future for Manchester United. What I'd do is I'd give him another season. And if it doesn't work out next season, that's when I would get rid of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I really, really would. 
But like I said, it is a transition period and Solskjaer is hopeful that we can get through this transition period. But uh, it, has been, it has been a transition period for several years, let's be honest. But, you know, take into account, like I've said before, you know, Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team. Because, analyze, you know, analysing it, you know, Solskjaer's inheriting the vast majority of Jose Mourinho's players. He's still inheriting players even from the Van Gaal era. There's only Marshall and Luke Shaw now here from the Louis Van Gaal era. I forgot to mention earlier on, by the way, there are other players Louis Van Gaal recommended in. And obviously, you know, there's still matter here from the David Moyes era. So Solskjaer does need time at the football club, you know. Don't get me wrong, I don't think he'll replicate Alex Ferguson's legacy, but I don't think any manager, you know, will replicate Alex Ferguson's legacy. But, you know, Ferguson enjoyed 26, 27 years at Man United, but obviously, you know, Ferguson, don't forget when we recommended him in, didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. He didn't win out in his first four years at the football club, did Alex Ferguson. But look what he went and accomplished after that four years of not winning anything, Alex Ferguson. You know, we won a total of 38 trophies under the Alex Ferguson era. But he does deserve more time, does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, definitely does. And I think, you know, when the football season does eventually resume, you know, we can continue this good run of form up and, you know, hopefully we can end the season on a high. I do expect around five or six players to leave Manchester United when the transfer market does reopen. Like I've said to you, I've already gone through with you. The players that I do expect to leave Manchester United, Jones, Lingard, Pereira, they're definitely three players I expect to go. I expect us to get rid of Rojo on a permanent transfer. I also expect us to get rid of Smalling on a permanent transfer. I think the club have got to try and get rid of Alexis Sanchez as well. He's another one. But obviously, you know, we're finding it very, very difficult because, like I said, Sanchez's wages, you know, are really, really having a bad effect on the football club. But uh, there you go. But we will definitely know get rid of players. Uh, and, you know, we can win silverware this season as well. Um, you know, we can win the FA Cup, we're into the quarterfinals. We can win the Europa League. You know, we are into the last eight, don't forget. But there you go. But, you know, the longer Solskjaer remains in a managerial job at Man United, he's going to be gaining more experience because he is inexperienced as a manager, let's be honest. So, yeah, so... Um, you know, that's really everything to update you with. So, obviously, the first topic I started with, you know, was Ed Woodward. You know, he's come out and, you know, told the fans for him, you know, that we will, we may not do business as usual in the summer transfer market. So, we won't spend hundreds of millions of pounds on players. So, reflecting on, you know, what Ed Woodward has said, you know, Jaden Sancho's move to Manchester United now is in doubt. And, you know, do you think, you know, we can get uh, our 21st title under the Oligan and Solskjaer area? And yeah, and like I've said to you before, you know, we've still got, you know, quite a few long serving players here at the football club. You know, a lot, quite a few long serving players have left, but we've got a few long serving players here now. You've obviously, you know, got De Gea, that's into his ninth season at Manchester United. You've got Juan Mata, he's now into his sixth season at the football club. You've got who else? There's a few others. You've got Luke Shaw, that's into his sixth season. You've got Martial now, that's into his fifth season. You've got Rashford, that's been here for several years. That's been here for several years. You know, Matic is now into his third season at the football club. Victor Lindelof's in his third season at the football club. You know, you've had his, obviously had Small in that in Jordan nine years. You know, you had, you've got Jones, that's now into his ninth season at Manchester United. So he's been a long serving player for the football club. But, you know, yeah, uh, maybe doing a video a bit later on. So, yeah, that's everything to update you with today. And also, like I mentioned to you yesterday, uh, this was stemming from Kieran McKenna. He says that our squad are planning to return to first team, first team training in May, providing that, you know, the government restrictions are eased. So we're planning on returning in May, you know. And like I also mentioned before, Rashford's expected to be fully fit and Pob is expected to be fully fit when the football season does eventually resume. So that's obviously not very, very good news. So anyway, guys, drop me comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribers always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.